Here are the top updates in AI news, science, and research this week. This includes an analysis on the most visited AI tools in 2023, a fully autonomous robot that can do a lot of household chores from cooking to doing the dishes to doing your laundry, Intel launching a new AI company, ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, now focusing on using AI for biotech and drug design, and more. So let's jump right in. First up, Intel launches a new AI software company called Articulate. It seems like more and more tech giants are jumping onto this AI bandwagon, and Intel is no exception. So on Wednesday, they launched Articulate, which is a generative AI company focused on enterprise customers. Now, what exactly does Articulate do? So far, they revealed that it can read text and images, and it can run securely inside business data centers. It's very similar to all the other ones you're seeing out there like OpenAI and Anthropic, but I guess this is tailored more towards enterprise customers in industries like finance, aerospace, telecom. Security is their main focus here, so they say that the system keeps all data within existing security perimeters. This is still quite early, they just announced this. There's no product ready to use yet, so we'll still need to give it at least a few months before it's ready to go to market. All right, this study conducted by RiderBuddy is really interesting. They basically analyzed the traffic patterns to all these different AI tools in the past year. So what they found was the top 50 AI tools attracted over 24 billion visits. And 60% of this was going to ChatGPT, which had 14 billion visits. Interestingly, during this period of September 2022 to August 2023, these three tools, Crayon, Midjourney, and Quillbot, faced the largest traffic declines, which is actually not surprising because Midjourney, it was the AI image generation tool, but that space quickly got a lot of new and free and open source competitors, such as Stable Diffusion, and then we had Dolly 3, and then also Bing image generator. And then Crayon is also an AI image generator, but the results are inferior. They're not as great as like Stable Diffusion or Bing image generator. So not surprisingly, the traffic to this site also declined the most. And then Quillbot is a writing tool, but I mean, all or most of the AI writing tools got decimated right when ChatGPT and these other chatbots came out. Because why pay for these writing tools when you can just get ChatGPT to write anything you want? 63% of these AI tools were accessed using mobile devices. You can see the number one most visited tool is ChatGPT with 14.6 billion visits. However, interestingly, the second most visited is Character AI, which is a role play chat tool where you can chat with a lot of different characters that users have predefined. So a lot of like different anime characters or fictional characters. There's so many options here and it's completely free to use. This just shows you the popularity of these chatbots. Like you wouldn't think that so many people would be willing to role play with an AI chatbot, which is obviously fake, right? It's not a real person, but that's not what the data shows. It shows that this is the second most visited tool with 3.8 billion total visits. And then the third one is Bard, which is interesting. I guess Bing Chat isn't in here anywhere. And then the fourth one is Janitor, which is also a role play chat tool like Character AI. And so is Crush on AI. And then for image generation, we have Midjourney leading the way. And then the second most visited image generation site is Civit AI, which actually can't generate images itself, but it hosts all the stable diffusion checkpoints and models that you can use. Like there's no one big stable diffusion image generator site out there, but I think if you combine all of them, it would surpass Midjourney by a lot, I think. And then all these other ones, Crayon, Leonardo, Playground.ai, they still have a lot of traffic, but I think they are slowly losing market share to free and open source models. I mean, people can just download Stable Diffusion and run locally on their computers, so there's no need to like go on any of these services. And then for writing, Quillbot is the leader here with 1.1 billion views, but also keeping in mind that Quillbot has faced one of the largest declines during this period, so they lost 5 million in traffic. And then we also have Novel AI, Copy.ai, Jasper, etc. And then for video, CapCut was number one, and then we had Runway, and then DID. And then for others, I think they're not very accurate in classifying some of these. So like Ramini, this is photo generation. Kyber, this is video generation. So it should be categorized as another color. But the biggest one for like data science and finding and sharing different models is definitely Hugging Face with 316 million visits. 
Here are the top 10 countries with the most users, so USA with 5.5 billion, and then India is number two, and then so on and so forth. I'm surprised China isn't on here. I think it should be on here, they just couldn't find the data. And then usage by gender, it's over two times as many males as females. So yeah, those are some interesting traffic insights into AI tools over the past year. Also, you can see the AI hype it really started like end of 2022, right when ChatGPT came out, and then it just grew exponentially until around like early summer of this year, and then it kind of died down a bit. So I think people overestimated what AI can do in the short term, and we are seeing a steady drop, at least up until August of 2023. This article used AI to identify what factors affected teenage suicide risk. So they used stacked ensemble algorithms, which basically means they took different machine learning algorithms and averaged them together to create this ensemble. And in general, ensemble models produce more accurate results than just a single machine learning model by itself. So they looked at a data set of 173,000 Norwegian adolescents, which I would argue is not actually too holistic. I mean, if you're only looking at people from Norway, I mean, I don't know, Norway to me seems like a pretty well-off country, pretty happy country, so I'm not sure what pressures the, the teens there would get. But anyways, there was a 4.65% rate of reported suicide attempt. So here are some of the results. The number here represents variable importance. So one is super important, zero means it's not important. So they found that if you ever in your lifetime conducted self-harm, this is the, the most important factor in influencing suicide risk. The next one is if you've felt worthless. And this is interesting. These are like more physiological, I think. But if you ever throw up after eating, that's like one of the top five factors here. Not falling asleep before 2 a.m. So if you sleep after 2 a.m., again, you have a higher risk of suicide. These are kind of intuitive. So parents are disappointed with me, number of school days missed, felt unhappy, sad, depressed, hopelessness about the future, problems falling asleep, woken up early and couldn't sleep again. So it seems like sleep is a quite a recurring theme in some of these factors here. So this just reinforces the importance of sleep and you should go to bed early. Here's another table which kind of categorizes these factors into five categories. So internalizing problems, this is like blaming yourself and just having some internal conflicts with yourself. And then there's sleep disturbance here and then disordered eating. So you can see actually the, the main category that has the most factors with the highest factor importance is just internal conflicts. So feeling hopeless, feeling pressure, feeling lonely, etc. Followed by sleep disturbance. So if you're not falling asleep before 2 a.m., if you have problems falling asleep, you wake up early and couldn't sleep again, this is the second most important category of factors which could influence your suicide risk. They also found that some other studies have noted that substance use, particularly weed, was a factor in teen suicide. However, this study did not find that substance use was important. Studies also found that demographic factors were not important. Environmental factors such as if you're living in a rural area versus an urban area were also not important. All right, this paper published just this week is also very interesting. So just last month, Tesla announced their Optimus Gen 2 bot, which can do so many different things. It's very fluid. You can see it walks perfectly fine. It's very balanced. It can do squats and a lot of different exercises. Its finger movements and its hands are very fluid, and it can even hold an egg. And this is very challenging because you need to apply just the right pressure without breaking the egg. So this is very impressive already. Now this team at Stanford built a totally autonomous robot. So I'll just play you the video so you can see what it can do. All right, pouring the oil in the pan, throwing the shrimp in there. So everything is autonomous. It's not controlled by any human. All right, so it can go in and out of an elevator just fine. Can pick up a napkin. It can high five. It can wash dishes. And it can put stuff back in the pantry. I think this is like a glimpse of what we can have in the future to help us out with a lot of household tasks. And this is surprisingly cheap. So the whole thing, including the training and the software and the hardware, only costs 
$32,000. And how they trained it was they used supervised behavior. So they first used humans to demonstrate the task and they call this co-training. And this can increase the success rate by up to 90%. So here's what I mean by co-training. So you can see like the first 50 iterations is a human actually directing or showing the robot what to do. So like, this is how you clean a washroom. And then after 50 iterations of training, the robot will be able to do it autonomously without any human guidance. Here's another example. So it can open curtains. It can water your plants. Vacuum the floor. Make you a nice cup of coffee. <laughs> Help you shave. That's funny. Clean everything, do the dishes for you. It can even play with your cat. That's nice. It can help wash your clothes, do the laundry. This is very impressive. So here's the robot cooking a three course meal. And again, keeping in mind, it's doing this all autonomously. So it's only trained by a human in the first like 50 rounds. And then once it has learned it, it can do all of this without any human guidance. It can crack eggs. That's amazing. Ooh, this is tough. I'm really impressed by like the amount of soy sauce it can pour. Like it's really hard to control that if you're a robot, but it seems to be doing a very good job. That's cute. All right, can I open this bag? Oh, wow. It can even open the bag like that. That's very impressive. It has no problems stirring things, putting the lid on things. It's really good. Wow, it can even dice garlic. Not great, but... <laughs> oh, it spilled some soy sauce. I'm impressed. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's decent. Let me know in the comments below if you would eat this three course meal. So yeah, I think like household robots that help you do chores such as cooking, washing dishes, cleaning things, it's gonna be here closer than you think. I think within like one or two years, we can have something in our households. All right, this article on Forbes is really interesting. So ByteDance is of course known for its viral app called TikTok, but they seem to be now moving into biochemistry and also drug discovery using AI. So they seem to be recruiting for its two teams. One is called AI for Drug Design and the other one is AI for Science. They're looking to go into this AI-driven drug design space and solve problems such as protein structure prediction, molecular confirmation analysis, protein design, etc. So very similar to the work that Google DeepMind is doing actually. And I don't think this is surprising because a lot of these tech giants, they just have so much money and they want to invest this into innovation. Like they've already killed it in the software side of things. Now they want to expand into other industries such as biotech. So you can see, for example, Google is doing the same thing with its moonshot factory. And then Google DeepMind is also solving these problems such as protein synthesis and protein design and other innovative stuff in neuroscience. And then Meta is also using AI to do stuff with health and medicine. So for example, improving access to MRIs and also improving the interpretation of x-rays. And then Amazon also invested in medical and healthcare by acquiring this one medical company. So this next article I found pretty interesting. So it talks about this company called Climate AI. It basically uses climate risk modeling. So it predicts changes in the climate in the short and long term. And then from these predictions, it provides recommendations to these food and beverage and agricultural companies, which helps them to adapt to changes in climate. 
So it looks at multiple factors, including air temperature, precipitation, soil temperature, humidity, evapotranspiration, as well as like pest and disease pressures, location, economic data, and it basically throws everything into this AI to forecast extreme weather events. And then it gives you some recommended actions. Climate AI has helped this seed company avoid real financial losses. So the software has predicted some wet conditions that would affect the harvest and advised this seed company to harvest early, which helped them to avoid losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, you know, weather and climate prediction, they have been traditionally very hard to predict accurately, but using AI and machine learning, it's now getting more and more accurate. And so this climate AI was able to forecast this unexpected rain event two months in advance, which is pretty impressive. Climate AI is also able to advise on like what locations have the lowest risk for planting certain crops based on future climate conditions. So for example, it can advise which types of wine grapes would do better in a given location and climate. So a really nice use case of AI and how that can play in with like weather prediction and then farming and crop production. That's it for the top AI updates this week. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, we built a site where you can search for all the AI tools out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.